All right, so we're gonna now talk about your lab report for the molecular formula determination using the gas law information. So for page one, you're gonna have your lab rubric found on Canvas. Page two is your lab report form, again, found on the chemistry website. For this one, I want all of the calculations. So I wanna see every calculation, nice and neat, legible, make sure it's organized. And then the last page will be the carbon copy of your data only. This lab has a few parts. So the first part, you have to determine the empirical formula, the uh, empirical formula. Bottom line, our goal is we want to end by having our molecular formula. But we got to start with the empirical formula. In lab, you will be given an elemental analysis. So that means you're going to be given a percent carbon, a percent hydrogen, and say a percent oxygen. Now you may not have a percent carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. You might have a percent carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine. Or you might have just a percent carbon and hydrogen. So I'm just going to use this as an example. So just remember, you may not have these three components. You may have just two, or you may have three different components. But remember, empirical formula deter determination means when we look at an empirical formula, so we're looking for the lowest whole mole ratio. And these percents, they better add up to what? That's right, 100. They should add up to 100, because then we're gonna assume that these masses are these percents, which we're going to um, look at as 100%, are going to then add up to 100 grams. So for mine, I ended up with, say, 37.5%, and because it's based on 100, I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, let that 37.5% equal 37.5 grams of carbon. And then I had 12.5 of hydrogen, and of course you could probably very quickly figure out my oxygen, and this ends up being 50 grams of oxygen. Now I said it's the smallest whole mole ratio, so that means I've got to convert all of these to moles. Now how do I convert those to moles. Where do I go for that information? That's right, we go to the periodic table. So all of these conversions are from the periodic table. Now that I have them in moles, we've then got to do the smallest mole whole ratio. So we're going to divide each of those by the smallest number of moles. So if the oxygen presents and it has the lowest number of moles, I'll divide each one by that number. And then if we end up, let's say, with 1, 1.5, and 1, we can't stop there because we need the whole mole ratio. Now I don't know that these numbers are going to equate to that, I'm just going through talking in terms of an example. So because I need a whole mole, I have to multiply this by two to get it to a whole number. And therefore, if I do that, I've also got to multiply two, the first one by two and the last one by two. So I'd end up with two and two. So my empirical formula for this particular compound, again, remember, I haven't done these numbers through here, but based on my fictitious example, I would have two carbon, to uh, three hydrogen and two oxygens. So that would be my empirical formula. So I'm not done yet. I've still got to get to molecular formula. Now this lab incorporates gas laws, and we learned in this chapter that we have this equation, which is pressure. And again, pressure needs to be in units of atmosphere. We have molar mass. This molar mass is what we're looking for because we're going to use it here in this molecular formula determination. So that molar mass should be in grams per mole. We have this little d, which means density, and when it's incorporated here, it must be in grams per liter. You will have weighed out your gas, so you have a mass, in a certain volume flask, therefore you have your liters. R is your gas constant, 0 0.0821, liters times atmosphere per mole Kelvin. This is what dictates the unit, hence pressure has to be in atmosphere and this in gram per liter. And then of course temperature, you're going to measure it in degrees Celsius, but you need to then convert it to Kelvin, so you'd add 273.15. 
because here we've got it in Kelvin. You'll plug those values in to then get the molar mass, which will be in units of grams per mole. And you don't have to do anything. If you use this equation, it will work out such that you end with the actual grams per mole value. Now, in lab, I'm not sure what units we're using to measure pressure this year, but the probes from last year were in inches of mercury. So you'll go down there and it might say 23.15 inches of mercury. Again, I'm making this number up. It might be much smaller than that. But you have to convert from inches of mercury to, to atmospheres. So to get there, one of the things I did is I just did some basic conversions where I went from one inch to centimeters here. So that gets rid of my inches. And again, I can't stop here. So I went from centimeters to millimeters. So for every one centimeter, there are 10 millimeters. And there's a reason I'm going to millimeters because I know that there are 760 millimeters of mercury per one atmosphere. And that's a conversion that we've learned in chapter 10 as well. And that is finally going to let me land in the right units for pressure, which is ATM or atmospheres. That's the number that you will plug in here for the pressure. So the empirical formula, we get that check. And again, these numbers come from the lab. So there should either be a number chart on the door for you to write down based on your unknown number or your instructor should give you those. And then here in part two, you're going to use your lab data that you gathered from lab to find your molar mass. And then in part three, you're going to take that molar mass that you determined from part two, plug it in here, and then you're going to find your empirical formula mass by going to the periodic table and adding up that mass of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen and plug it in here. And that's going to give you the value for N. That'll tell you how many times that your empirical formula will go into your molecular. So whatever N is, you've then got to multiply by N. Again, this area, you will round it. So if it's 1.8, you will round it to 2. If it's 1.2, you will round it down to 1. So this is where you'll round. You will not round up here. Remember that. They're two very different. This is experimental data. You're not going to necessarily get exactly 2.000 or something like that. So look at your data, reconcile it, and finish off your molecular formula. And that's your lab report.